So I just watched another video about WannaCry infecting Linux, and I thought, oh, well, the problem must be because the Z driver is used in Wine, that is the default drive letter Z that maps to your root folder. So I thought, okay, what happens if you just map it to the C drive only, the Wine fake C drive? And I was actually quite surprised it goes and infects your home folder, so it escapes out the C drive. Hmm, what goes on there and why should that happen in Wine? I don't understand this yet but yes it's effective in linux in that you have to manually run the file it doesn't go around the automatic propagation but we're going to see if i can infect the windows 7 system next to me i know it says windows 10 at the top there but it's actually not windows 7 driver got in here well that's interesting the file has failed but it's not failed at all because look now i've got the one of decryptor files on my desktop Hmm. Oh, and the folder's refreshed. So, how did that happen? Oops, your files are encrypted. But you've escaped out of the C drive. <laughs> yeah, strange. Now, interestingly, that's still not infected the Windows 7 system next to me. Why can't I make that one get infected? I, knew, I know you have to enable the SMB shares to make the exploit work. And I know the exploit has been effective because this 192.168.62.134 is that Linux machine and it's lit up like a Christmas tree, isn't it? Look, it's trying to affect port 445. Sorry, it's a bit small that screen, isn't it? And yeah, it's going after any internet-based IP it can find. So I'm best shut this down. So that's an example. Yes, it can be run. So let's just get this network offline. There, that will stop anyone else being exploited. Oh, by the way, to make this work, I had to sync hold the killed switch domain. So that's all I did. Sync hold it to a non-existent IP on my network. So my password's txt file is gone now, so it's been taken over by that one cry. Please read me. The decryptor file there. So I suppose we could open that with wine and see what's going on. And I'll curse that this has escaped unscathed. You weren't supposed to escape unscathed. And don't you mock me by changing the wallpaper either. Bloody thing. At this point now, the virtual machine became very unresponsive. I don't know whether this cryptography side of WannaCry was going rampant on the rest of the hard drive or what. I don't know. I ended up having to kill dash 9 VirtualBox. As far as running the executable for the WannaCry decryptor, couldn't get it working. I only tried a couple more times and no, it didn't happen. I did manage to find a couple of executable files were running and my attempts to close them on that virtual box just became hopeless in the end. It, the whole thing would seized up by that point. So what I think was interesting about WannaCry on Wine was that it actually broke out the sandboxing. You noticed I only had a C drive, so all that Wine should have been able to access was that specific subfolder under my home folder. But surprisingly it broke out the C drive and began going rampant on the rest of the hard drive, or well, certainly my home folder got infected. Some bash scripts that I have written in my slash home folder were encrypted. And also surprising that it went after bash scripts really, because .sh files would have really no meaning in Windows. The equivalents would be .ps1 PowerShell scripts. I wonder if part of the reason for it becoming so unresponsive was that it actually managed to go rampant on the root folder as well, so perhaps some of the operating system for Ubuntu and maybe some of the applications have become, oh, I don't know, what's the word, infected, um, damaged, maybe. Now upon reboot, the system was perfectly functional again. So Wine doesn't appear to have the equivalent registry entries for making WannaCry work again on reboot. So yeah, my system was normal again after reboot, other than a whole bunch of files that got infected. Wine has become a bit of a concern really, because the more advanced it becomes in running Windows applications, that also translates to the more advanced it becomes of running Windows malware. I want to stress though the automated side of WannaCry is useless against Linux. The exploit targets the Windows sharing SMB protocol. The equivalent in Linux is Samba, and that lacks the buffer overflow vulnerability from SMB version 1. 
So despite the exploit actually working, it cannot be automated over the internet. You would actually have to go and manually run the exploit. And besides the executable file which I've downloaded from Virus Total, I have not actually seen a sample of the executable file sent via email. The propagation method is primarily via the network. So do you have any other theories of what has gone on here? Because I just have really drawn a blank. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.